Hello, my name is Lisa. This is where I sew. You're very welcome. Today I'm going to do a review of my new sewing machine, which is a Genome DC3050. And I bought it about three weeks ago. And I bought it because I killed my other machine. By which I mean I didn't get it serviced enough. So there was all sorts that could have probably been looked after better. What happened was that the timing went, or that's what I've diagnosed wrong with it. It could be something different, but it started to skip stitches and the stitches were just unraveling. Through the magic of YouTube, I concluded that the timing between the, the needle going down and the bobbin catching, so it, it uh, created a, a strong stitch with both parts of the thread being pulled through properly was out of whack. So it was pointless. And with the pandemic and the situation being what it is, there was nowhere to repair it, which I thought was perfect time to buy a new one. And I decided to have a slight upgrade. I've, I'll put a picture of the new machine, the DC3050. I think I spent about 200 pounds on the last genome. And I'll give the details of that below. I've also got some um, demonstrations about threading and winding a bobbin on to my previous machine. So I'll link those down below as well. Um, I decided to upgrade a little bit. This one cost £349 from John Lewis. Is it worth it? I think so. I think it's more than serviceable for my needs as a sort of an intermediary, no, I'd say an advanced beginner. It might be too much for a beginner in terms of you might just get distracted. For instance, it's got 50 stitch choices. Some of them are decorative. And I think there's quite a variety of overlocking stitches. Now, I don't think you need to worry about those while you're just still establishing your basic sewing skills. Uh, like, say, just using a basic straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. Until you've got all of those really perfected, there may be just too much going on here for you. Um, and for your first machine to learn on, it would be, I think, just a bit too much. So if you're a little bit further down the road, then definitely. But if you're just out at the starting gate, scale it back a bit. Right. First impressions. It's really quiet. It's so smooth and quiet. It's like I can listen to the radio comfortably <clears throat> while this is running. Whereas with my, my previous machine, I had to, to use earphones. And like I said, it's very, very smooth. I find that the foot pedal is a lot more sensitive. Oh, well, one or two things could be happening here. Let's face it. I could be getting a bit better, i.e. my foot control of the pedal may have improved or this is a more sensitive foot pedal it's not plastic it's um steel but i have found it far easier to control so it will respond to much lighter touch and when speed is not the issue <laughs> when you need to be going slowly i i have found it really remarkable um it's quite easy to familiarize yourself with straight out of the box. I was using it within like an hour of unpacking it. I had, mind you, I had a pile of stuff that I wanted to do, so I wanted to get on with it, but I familiarized myself with it quite quickly. So if you want to hang around for a more detailed look at some of the features that are on this, and there are some little clever bits and pieces that, um, appeal to me then you know stick around I'll be doing a demonstration as well of how to thread it how to wind the bobbin and how to get ready to go and uh, if you've got any questions leave them in the comments below and uh, yeah stick around and I'll talk you through some of it right now bye bye so the first feature of this machine of the DC3050 is this display area and this is where you choose select your stitch type and the way you do that is up here this first part 
I know that this little these little computer display um, digital display figures here are flickering but I think that's got to do with the camera anyway um, this here is choosing your stitch type so zero one is your basic straight stitch zero two is a basting and so on and so forth all the way down to all of these embroidery choices here then um, to move through those choices you simply press the plus button one two three so on and so forth then to move back two one you're back to your straight stitch these buttons are quick access so rather than um, clicking all the way through to say this is a basic zigzag stitch takes you straight there this is an overlock stitch six the button stitch um, there are other button selections here this is the standard one that you would use most of the time um, so those are back to your main stitch now this button takes you through the kind of I mean how you want to use the stitch so this this is the width of the stitch now for instance the other day and I'll put a little picture in here of a piece of, uh, I used this little heart embroidery piece on the hem of a small skirt that I dress that I had made um, I used the smallest I used it as the standard set and that was set there and it was quite small and it was perfect for what I needed to do but this will increase the width of the stitch so it would have made that that stitch wider bigger there you go so to increase that again use the plus button then back down again three five so that's the width using this button again into the next mode which is the length of the stitch um so um yeah so whatever you need the stitch to do the length there can be adjusted and then press it to go back to stitch selection so that's that particular i hope that's demystified some of it there um, i'm looking forward to using some of these other stitches when I used the heart, I thought it'd be really time consumed, but it wasn't. It went quite quickly. I didn't do a huge amount with it, but uh, yeah, it moved along quite quickly. It looked very pretty. But I have to say that you need to sort of be aware of the tension of the fabric as you're moving it through the feed dogs, or it can look a bit tight. So you, you would need to spend some time practicing on it. Yeah, so that's all of that there. Hope that was helpful. Okay, so over here, this is the thread tension. I've never seen this before in any other machine. It's got an automatic setting. And uh, from reading the um, reading the manual, the, ma the majority of the stitches are not going to need the tension set any other differently other than at this automatic setting. So for the straight stitches and say the zigzag stitches, this this is fine. I think for some more complicated things like using the zipper foot or the uh, buttonhole presser you may need to adjust the tension thread but check in the manual this focused this is the speed slide adjustment so going from left to right slow snail's pace medium and fast but even at the very very fastest I found it quite smooth and I'm a bit of a speed fiend but it kept me in check and it's it's nice and steady so that's what these two are about right <clears throat> so these are some functions that are different from machines that I've had before this is the reverse button so you reverse stitch with this this is the auto lock button. So when you're on the stitch pattern 0102, which are the straight and the base stitch, or 10 and 11, so if we come back over here, 1 and 10 and 11 and 2, 
This auto lock will immediately sew a locking stitch. So rather than having to use your reverse stitch, it'll immediately do it for you. Isn't that clever? I think that's brilliant. Um, next is up, down, needle. Now you can press this button to bring the needle up or down and the machine will stop with the needle up or down, depending on which choice you've made using this. So, you know, it's one of those things, particularly if you're um, sewing around a corner and when you pivot and then you have to kind of stop and put it down, it'll do it automatically. So you can save yourself a little bit of time and general annoyance. Down here, the bobbin is uh, top loading. My previous genome had a side load. And you know what? Even though I, I still take this out, the little arm here, I still move this out to change the bobbin. So old habits. Um, there you go. Nothing in there. You can stash things in there. This is the button presser foot. I've yet to master this, but I will in the fullness of time. I find buttons scary, but hopefully I'll I'll um, I'll master them. Just keep trying. I've got this far. Okay, so here's the drill for winding your bobbin. First of all, interesting thing about this machine. Sorry, I've only got one pair of hands, so this is going to look a bit clumsy. Um, the the spindle is horizontal. I nearly broke it in an attempt to get it to sit upright before I, I realised that uh, this is what it's meant to be sitting like. So, nice little cap to keep keep the, the spool in place. They've also got, these comes in the little accessories pack. There's one for larger sized spools. Um, this, this gives a really nice smooth action to the thread coming off the coming off the spool and feeding through. The next bit. Um, the thread. Okay, so this it gives you a little explanation here, but it's worth noting that the thread should fit in snugly in here. In here not down there up here otherwise it's going to be too loose and it is not going to wind on smoothly and uniformly onto the bobbin okay thread is in its right place here through the little gap with your finger click it across your screen will read SP I don't know what that means, but it means your your bobbin is locked and loaded and you're ready to start filling it with thread. What I like to do is keep a long sort of tail on it. Keep it upright for the first few few turns because it just keeps a uniform, a uniform tension on it so it starts out as it needs to continue. Right. Okay, so then with blunt scissors that are no use to man or beast. Hang on. I slipped that bit off. <laughs> you, get, you, get, you get the picture. So, that's the bobbin wound. Okay. I just wanted to add this bit in. I don't know if you can see it here the dark thread how it's coming so smoothly off the spool no snagging I have had that happen on other on other machines it's lovely now to threading again just another tip as well I've probably said this before in other videos it's always beneficial to have the thread coming in this direction off the spool so to achieve this, you have the spool loaded 
in this direction. If you have it thusly, thread is going to become a C, whereas in the other direction, it just flips it's really in a lovely straight, smooth, uninterrupted flow. Okay, so following the direction. This is the first obstacle. Then your thread comes down here. If you follow the direction of the arrows, it will give you a good... Now, the next bit, this arm here needs to be in this position. So to achieve that, you move the hand wheel. And it pulls it up. Then you take your thread slide it round and that's where it should sit. From here you the next part needle the thread comes around this little I don't know what you would call that. Hook? Yeah, little hook. And then you're ready to put your thread through the needle. The presser foot should be in the upright position because there are in here, I don't know if you can see them, if you inspect it on your own machine, there are two plates through which the thread sits and that's the thread tension. When the presser foot is down and the lever for that is behind here, so up. So pull it down. Those two plates are now engaged and the thread, the thread tension is engaged. Um, you can't thread the needle with the tension on it. So always thread the needle with the presser foot up. Now, I can't thread the needle, I'm not that good yet. So I'll just put this on pause for a minute, I'll thread the needle and I'll be right back. Okay, now, I hope you can see all of this. This machine has an automatic needle threader and to, to use it, you can save yourself a couple of minutes you look just here very carefully there's another little little space so the thread needs to come through here it's another um, thread guide okay so once that in place there's a small handle over here which brings down the threading piece you take your thread I need to see this without my big old fingers been in the way. You need to hook the thread behind here. The needle, okay, needs to be at its highest point. So right the way up, using the handle to move it to the highest position. Needle threader comes down. I'll tell you what, take that out of the way. Needle threader is down. You hook the thread around this bit. And then there's just over here. There is another gap then it's a little bit fiddly once you get used to it it's fine and it will become second nature but the first few goes in it the thread needs to be in front of the hole of the needle okay so your thread is coming along like that and then Okay, so with the thread running between these two pieces and the needle at its highest point, you simply let go. There you go. Your needle is threaded. You just pull your thread through. It's all done. So for the next part of the threading process, is putting the bobbin in. With the thread running that direction 
you see? I'm doing this one-handed, so bear with me if I look a little clumsy. With the thread running to the left, slide it in. Now you'll see that there's grooves here. Your thread needs to go through these grooves. That's it, you just pull it through, pull it to the back. Now, if you watch closely, with the presser foot up, so your top thread moves smoothly. Watch. Let's just do that again. Okay, so with the final process of threading your machine is putting the bobbin in. Okay, so the thread needs to be running in this direction like so. And then if you see these two sort of notches that are here in the bobbin casing, slide your bobbin in. Take your thread and fix it. Run it through between these two notches. You should feel, feel it fit in quite smoothly. That's, ignore that. So run the thread out there. Now again, using your hand wheel to move. I like to hold on to the thread coming through the needle. Just don't know why, but I just like to do that. You move the needle down. Now watch, see how it snags the thread. Oh, I don't know if I can show you any more clearly than that. Then, there you go. That's the loop of the, the bobbin thread under there. Then with your um, stitch stitching whipper or a pair of small pair of uh, scissors or something, grab it, pull it through. And both threads are now coming out the back. And that's the bobbin. You replace the lid with these two catches here. They fit in over here. Snap into place. There you go. You've got your bobbin in. And again, like any other machine, you've got the... Um, these marks for your for your um seam allowance so five eighths of an inch three eighths of an inch an eighth of an inch five eighths of an inch and again on the bottom it's in centimeters so then you're all ready to sew and that was everything you could ever possibly know i think about the dc3050 well as far as i've discovered we are just getting to know each other. I am sure there may be little hacks and little things as you go along. Um, if this was helpful, either to help you make a decision about whether or not to purchase this machine, or if you're an owner and you've had some things as you go along that you have a question about, I hope this has helped. Um, I'm hoping that sewing is keeping you as grounded and as sane as it is helping me apart from the fly that's just doing this thing in here is driving me mad yeah so um share any projects that you're working on and uh yeah hopefully we'll all be back to normal soon thank you for joining me keep an eye out for the reviews and uh like subscribe all of that stuff down do it come see me again bye for now